section 10.1, curves defined by parametric equations. Let's begin with reading the definition for parametric equations. Imagine the particle moves along the curve C shown in the image. It is impossible to describe C by an equation of the form y equals f of x because C fails the vertical line test. But the x and y coordinates of the particle are functions of time, and so we can write x equals f of t and y equals f of g of t. Such prep equations is often a convenient way of describing a curve and gives the following definition. Suppose that x and y are both given as a function of a third variable t called a parameter. By the equations called parametric equations, y equals f of t and I'm sorry, x equals f of t and y equals g of t. So notice they're all in terms of t. Each value of t determines the point x comma y, which we can plot in a coordinate plane. As t varies, the point x and y equal f of t and g of t as a coordinate point. That varies and traces out a curve C, which we call a parametric curve. The parameter, t, the parameter T does not necessarily represent time, and we can also use another letter. But in many applications of parametric curves, it does denote time, and we can, we can interpret each point as the position of a particle at time T. So let's do an example. And they're pretty straightforward. Just like how you learn to plot a line back in your elementary algebra course, we begin by doing a chart. So let's go ahead and do a chart. Now we have a third variable to account for our t. Now our t values can be anything you choose for it to be. So you're going to choose these t values. And just like before, it's good to have some positive or negative options. So let's choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we're going to plug in a t into our x formula, which was x is equal to t squared minus 2t. We're going to go ahead and plug in a t equaling negative 2, so that we have negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2, and we see that we get 8 as our answer. Same thing for our y equation. We said that y is equal to t plus 1, our t is negative 2, negative 2 plus 1, we get negative 1. And this gives us a coordinate point, just as before. So we have the coordinate point as x comma y, which was in this case, eight comma negative one. So we're plugging in our t of our choice into our x equation, which will produce our x coordinate, and, then, and also into our y equation, which will produce our y coordinate. If we finish this off with negative one, we get three for x, zero for y. If t is zero, we get zero for x and one for y, negative one, two, and 0, 3. So let's go ahead and graph our parametric equation. I think we need to reach an 8, so let's write 8 tick marks. Okay, I think that should get us by. All right, let's go ahead and plot our points. So we have our points. We have negative one, zero, I'm sorry, eight, negative one. So we have this point here at eight comma negative one. We have three, zero. We have zero up one. 
we have negative 2, I'm sorry, negative 1 up 2. And 0, 3. So we see that this is going to create some type of parabolic like graph, right? Now we have our t's to account for. Our t is our position. Let's start with the negative one. So we have t equals negative 2, then we have t equals negative 1, t equals 0 t equals 1, t equals 2, and we see that with each t as it increases, it gives us a direction. So we draw little arrows to denote that notation. And that is an image of our parametric equation. Now let's expand on this idea. Now our image, our graph, Our, Im our image can be verified algebraically. By eliminating the t variable. So let's look at our equations. We can solve for t and plug it into x by um, working it from our y equation. So we can subtract 1, subtract 1, y minus 1 equals t. Let's go ahead and take this y, y minus 1 and plug it in for each t. So that way we'll only have our equation working with x's and y's only, no more t's. If we do so, so again, keep in mind that we said um, y minus 1 equals t. And we're going to plug that into x equals t squared minus 2t. So we have y is equal to mm, y minus 1 squared minus 2 y minus 1 b squared or my, what, minus 1 binomial. And we get y squared minus 2y plus 1. We distribute that negative 2 minus 2y plus 2. And we're left with x is equal to y squared minus 4y plus 3. And we see that this would produce some parabola that opens to the right. So it verifies. Now in this case, there wasn't a restriction to our parameter, our parameter, but that may happen. So parameter restrictions are a thing. So you can have like t is within something. You'll, we'll see that soon. Let's go on to our next example. Now our next examples are discovery moments. They're not necessarily something that we kind of walk in knowing and we kind of develop these ideas. Example two, what curve is represented by the following parametric equation? So coming into this with parameters, we might not think, Hey, we see sine and cosine. Let's go ahead and square it. Now we have x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t. And we have a parameter restriction where t has to be between 0 and 2 pi. So we can think of x and y. And with this, maybe we could be thinking our Pythagorean identities. Remember, um, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So then we can apply this to our parametric functions to have cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t equals 1. And then we can imply that x squared plus y squared, which equals sine squared or cosine squared of t plus sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So therefore, we can say that we have the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. And remember, we also have our labeling for our coordinates. For x comma y, 
we're saying that we have cosine of t for x and sine of t for our y. Now really, all we have is our unit circle. So we can go ahead, take a look at unit circle in your cheat sheets or Google search unit circle. You see that our radius is, well, a standard unit circle has a radius of 1. We have 0, pi over 2, uh, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And we can pick our t. So if we do a chart like before, though in this, though in this case we kind of don't because we know what we're going to end up drawing. But if we're going to draw our chart, our t is in radian measurement. So you can pick your radian measurement to something that's within your unit circle so that you, that you don't have to work so hard. And for our t values, let's pick points along our first quadrant, for example. We can choose points like pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. And we'll produce these points that will, along our t, our t will be increasing this way, produce our points. So we have pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. All right, x is sine. And you already know these answers, kind of, because I'm sorry, x is cosine. I said x is sine. x is cosine. Because here we have these points along our, our function. We know at pi over 6, we have the point square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Our x is our cosine, so we have square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. So we can use our points when we're in circle to finish this, uh, this uh, chart here. So that we'll have square root 2 over 2 and square root 2 over 2 and 1 half and square root 3 over 2 to plot each point along our unit circle. And we will see that we can pick all the points in our unit circle and we have a our parametric graph. Let's move on to our next example. Again, these are discovery moments. So don't feel like we need to know everything beforehand. There was very little given information on parametric equations before we jumped into these examples. All right, so let's do another problem. So we have x equals 2t, I'm sorry, x equals sine of 2t, y equals cosine of 2t, and our t has a restriction from 0 to pi. All right, so we know from 0 to pi that's just like a circle, our limitations to our circle. Now, what's different here from our previous example is that 2 within the trig argument. All right, so let's try to work with this and try to um, reason our way out of this problem. So again, we have the unit circle, but as t increases from 0 to pi, The point x comma y gives us sine of 2t and cosine of 2t. And it starts at 0 comma 1. And because of that 2, it's going to produce us to move twice along the circle counter, I'm sorry, clock in a clockwise direction.
All right, we're moving clockwise because notice our x is in cosine. Remember, x is always cosine. It's not in this case. And y is always sine, and it's not in this case. So instead of moving counterclockwise when x is cosine and y is sine, like our previous example in example 2, we're going to have a situation where our direction is changed. So that's why we're moving clockwise. And that 2 in that argument allows us to move twice along our circle. Next question. Find a parametric equation for the circle with center h comma k and a radius r. Again, this is something that we kind of don't know and we're kind of developing as we, we think about it. So based on what we learned, we know that a circle is made up of x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t. So based on example two, We learned that when x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t, we produce a circle. Now we just need to incorporate or um, adjust our functions to allow shifts. Shifts, we can make our circle bigger and smaller um, and also um, add some type of shift. So this gives us x equals h plus r cosine of t and y equals k plus r sine of t. And we, re we write a restriction for t, where 0 is less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 2 pi. So this allows us to have a circle with a center h comma k and a radius r. And there we have it. Example five, sketch a curve with parametric equations x equals sine of t and y equals sine squared of t. All right, so before we even jump in, we kind of know where our graph is going to be, and we can do it by verifying our function. So if we verify our function, meaning eliminating the t, Well, sine of t is equal to x, so we can write an x for sine of t, so that we have y is equal to, remember x is now, um, sine of t is now x squared. So we really just have a parabola, a parent parabola, y equals x squared. Now with this we said, but we still have these limitations, when x and y is made up of sine of t, and our y is made up of sine squared of t. Now our sine squared will always produce a positive option. Our sine t will give us a range from 1 to negative 1. Again, think of your circle. What's the biggest value your, your sine can be? So we have restriction here for t or x, not t. It's only the x where x is less than or equal to negative 1 and 1. Because of our function, let's write this down. Because of this, our function moves back and forth. infinitely along the parabola.
from negative 1, 1 to 1, comma 1. So our parabola We have 1 comma 1 and negative 1 comma 1. And our, per, our parameter will be moving along this way and then back down. Now again, we're limited to what our values of x and y can be because our x and our y represent sign, a version of sign. Example six, use a graphing device to graph the curve x equals y to the fourth power minus 3t, 3y squared. All right, in the future, you might see parametric equations, particularly when you go on to your next calculus course, and it might be a bit too complex to graph by hand, which is okay. Let's use our technology. Now, a free online option you have is Desmos. So go on to Google or your favorite search engine and go ahead and type in um, Desmos Graphing Calculator. And that will help you graph mm, just about any type of function or basic function, I guess you can say. And this uh, search will produce our desired uh, result. You're going to want to type in x is equal to y. And for an exponent in mathematics, we type in a caret. That's shift in one of your number buttons that have a little caret. 4, so that will give us y to the fourth power, minus 3, y, a caret, and 2. Now, in the future, once we have more complex parametric equations, decimals can also handle that as well. But we have to do use a different decimal search. So you can also search Desmos parametric graphing. Now, decimals will be enough for all of your graphing needs. You can also do 3D graphing, which you will do in your next calculus course. So when you graph it, your picture will look something like this. And I actually want to share this with you. So I have this handy here. Again, I just go to our Google and I typed in decimals graphing calculator and that first option will be what you what you would need. And we can just go ahead and type x equals y to the fourth power minus three y squared. Now this is a version I have for my uh, tablet again this is all free when you type it on your on your computer or your laptop pretty much it would be much easier to type in of course but for me I would do like uh, x button equal sign a y variable now for exponent I would do that little exponent button and the four and then under functions choose that right arrow to get out of exponents then go a minus three y and then choose that a square to give me a square. And that produced my answer that I want. And you can always ignore graphs by clicking on the color on the side. It tells you what it's showing using color coding. All right, back to our notes. Here we go. Okay, another type of graph is a cycloid. Example seven, the curve traced out by a point P on a circumference of a circle as a circle rolls along a straight line is called a cycloid. Now, if we didn't have this line, you have this line here, that makes it very important because if we didn't have a line, this circle moving along uh, the function would produce the sine and cosine graph. So limiting Limiting what the outcome can be to above a line produces a cycloid. Continuing on, if a circle has a radius r and rolls along the x-axis, and if one of the position of p is the origin, find a parametric equation for the cycloid. 
again, this is a discovery moment. It's a very trick. It's we're pretty much doing a proof to get to an answer. Okay, we're gonna need the next image to kind of help us work along this discovery. Okay, so we're gonna work with this arc P and T to begin with. This arc P T can be made up of our radius R times R theta. Now this arc is a distance, so we're really finding this distance from P to T. which will denote in our notation as absolute value PT. Now with that, we're also going to be using other parts of our graph, such as our center. We can label our center our center to be C will be R theta times R. So with that, we can label these X coordinates where X is equal to our distance from O to T minus our distance from P to Q. And that will produce our R theta minus R sine theta which will be equal to r theta minus sine theta. And our y, which is equal to our distance from tc minus our distance from qc, which is r minus r cosine theta, which is equal to r1 minus cosine theta. Again, this is just a discovery. This is all we need to get. You can really just take it as a definition. So our parametric equations for a cycloid are r equal, x equals r times theta minus sine theta, y equals r times 1 minus cosine theta, where our theta is any real number. So the shorthand for mathematics, that means element of. And that R means R, all real numbers. So we're just saying that theta can be any real number. Another example. Investigate the family of curves with the parametric equation y x equals a plus cosine of t and y equals a tangent of t plus sine of t. What do these curves have in common? How does the shape, of, how does the sh shape change as a increases? So just take a moment to see how it changes. You see, as it's a larger negative number, such as a being negative 2, it kind of looks like almost two parallel lines with a slight raise. And as your negative gets uh, a small closer to 0, our figure kind of changes. And we kind of start developing like some type of circle within our function. When it's 0, we have the unit circle, or just a circle. Um, as our a gets slightly larger, we kind of get a reflected version of that negative option, right? And we see what happens as it goes continuing and getting larger and larger. Uh, these curves are called conchoids of Nicomedes. And they're named after the Greek scholar Nicomedes. And he named those because the conchoids, the shape of their outer branches resembles that of a conch shell or a mussel shell. So that's how he named these, or why he named these. All right, so this was an introduction to parametric equations. Your homework will be problems. 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. Thank you.